Hey guys, my name's Will Nichols, this is Sam Rowley, and today we're going to be looking at the best camera for wildlife photography. We've come to a wetland centre in the southwest of England because there's loads of really good subjects for us to shoot here. We've got some captive wildlife, some actual wildlife, and we're going to be testing out some of the great kit we've got today. So today I'm going to be trying out the Nikon brands, we've got a number of cameras and Will is also going to be trying out the Canon range. So uh, I have the D7500, I also have the D500 and the D850. And I got the Canon 1DX Mark II, Canon 5D Mark IV and then the Canon 80D as well. We're going to look at some of the main factors that you'll want to consider when choosing your next wildlife camera. So that's your ISO handling, your megapixels, autofocus systems, frame rates and how all of these things are going to affect your images. Today we're going to simplify the marketplace for you. We're going to make your decision as easy as possible for your next camera. So I've got the Nikon gear, Will's got the Canon gear, we'll see you later. So Sam headed off to see what he could find around the reserve, but found himself getting held up by some of its more permanent residents. Eventually I found some more lively subjects, and some were more flamboyant than others. This video is supported by photo insurance specialist PhotoGuard. When disaster strikes and you damage your camera, the price to repair or replace can be high. PhotoGuard take the worry out of repairing or replacing your prized camera, drone or video equipment. Check the link on screen or in the description below to get an instant quote from PhotoGuard. There's also a 10% discount for all subscribers to the Nature TTL channel. Now, on with the video. So I'm currently shooting with a D850. Um, I've had an amazing time with it today, so I'm usually a D500 shooter, but it's really blown me away. I mean, the, the price budget is double the D500, but you can really you can really see why. I was using the camera earlier in some low light situations, just some mallards underneath the dark bush, but like you could really see its performance at high ISOs, it really, really blew me away. Um, the lack of noise at, I think it was about 4,000 I was on, was just remarkable. Um, also helped with the uh, tilt screen feature which meant I didn't need to get down low and get my get my body all muddy um, I could just put it on the ground and look down at the, the tilt screen and that would do the work for me which is fantastic another element of the D850 that's really surprised me is the introduction of focus speaking so this is the first time that Nikon have used this in their camera range what it essentially does which I'm doing right now is it tells you exactly what part of the photo is in focus at any one time so it highlights certain elements of the photo this is obviously very good for getting a pin sharp image and it's something that you'd usually expect from a high end mirrorless camera so it's, it's amazing that Nikon have managed to feature this in their portfolio. Meanwhile, I found myself photographing something a little unexpected. I'm currently shooting with Canon's 1DX Mark II and that's their flagship DSLR camera and it retails at over £5,000. Now, my subject today is not actually your typical wildlife subject because um, in this bird hide a load of cows have just turned up but they're letting me try out the crazy frame rate of this camera which you can hear is pretty fast and that's what this flagship is actually famous for now personally I don't really think just that frame rate would justify such a high cost um, but one thing I actually really did enjoy using this camera today was its insanely good ISO capabilities now I was in a woodland area in some shade and I was happily firing off shots at ISO 6400 um, and I would have even pushed it higher if I needed to. Um, and as a wildlife photographer when you're doing a lot of low light imagery that's definitely a very very uh, attractive point. But I've got to say the Canon 5D Mark IV is, is a strong favourite at the moment because even though it's a bit slower, I mean it's 7 frames a second so actually it's quite a lot slower. Um, but you have 30 megapixels versus the 20 megapixels here. Um, and I'm a bit of a stickler for being able to shoot at a high resolution. I quite like if I nail a shot to know that I've got as many megapixels as possible. And yeah, okay, maybe it's ISO handling isn't as good, but it is about £3,000 versus £5,000. So it's something to think about when you're making that choice. After some more testing, it was time for us to compare our cameras. So we've just got back from a long day shooting with all the kit been pretty hot actually and considering between us we've got about six DSLR cameras and also a video camera it's been pretty heavy as well. Pretty heavy indeed. Yeah but how have you found the kit Sam? What's, oh, what's mate, been your I favourite was, today? 
I'm very excited about the D850. Yeah. I really am. So all my life I've got experience with the D7000 range, the D200, the D300, the D500 range, and it's kind of brought together like a perfect storm of all of my favourite features and more. Yeah. It's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, it's 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 almost strange because it almost feels like these kind of full frame cameras in the past that Nikon have released have been more like studio based, landscape based cameras. And with this, they've also bought in, you know, high frames per second, you know, great ISO capabilities, which kind of is like a nature photographer's dream. Um, so it's, it's I, yeah, it's just really exciting. I think I'm gonna have to rethink the, the kind of, you know, my current range of cameras. I'm gonna have to broaden, you know, broaden into, eight, in, into the D850 sphere pretty soon. What did you find? For me, uh, with the Canon kit, I think mm. you've kind of hit the nail on the head that Nikon's brought out a great camera that uh, is this, bridging together all of these high-end, high frame rate, but also high resolution cameras. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think with Canon, the I mean, the D850 is a very new camera, but with Canon, at the moment, I feel like I have to compromise between the 1DX Mark II or the 5D Mark IV. Um, for me, I shoot day to day with the Canon 5D Mark IV, and yep. I think having used the 1DX, it's great, it shoots 14 frames a second, so it Oof. blitzes, but I don't think it's overly that necessary, and yeah, yeah, even definitely. though it's, it is great, I think I would personally still stick with the 5D Mark IV. And the, the 1DX does have fantastic ISO capabilities, mm -hmm. um, and we definitely saw that shooting some stuff in the shade. I mean, yeah. I said earlier I was at ISO 6400 mm. um, happily, and I would probably go further in low light. And I do tend to do a lot of low light stuff as well. but. Uh, but well, it's 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 amazing that these ISO capabilities as a as a wild photographer can open up so many doors. You know, like rainforest shooting. I kind of feel like today I can now conquer a rainforest in any light and get any shot that I wanted, which yeah. is which is just in, not a rainforest, also like a normal forest. You know, it's it just and, opens and, up so and, many new yeah. opportunities. It's great. And your shots really come out exciting. at forty megapixels at the same time, well, and exactly. ten of them a second. So. Exactly. Yeah. The the entry level cameras there. I've been interested to know what your thoughts were because mm. there's going to be a lot of people watching who yeah. maybe don't want to spend. Five thousand pound on a high-end DSLR. You can, you, so you can save so much money getting a D seven five hundred. D seven thousand five hundred. Yeah. Um, it does everything that you want it to do. I mean, it it, it doesn't do the fantastically. It doesn't all more than good enough. So, if you as a wildlife photographer had, uh, and you you've been doing photography for as many years as me. We've known yeah. each other for ten years. Behind, yeah. behind the lens. <laughs> behind the lens. But if you if you had to swap out your kit you've got now and use the D7500, do you think you would miss anything massive in your day-to-day -day working? I mean, I, I miss that 10 frames a second when I'm shooting birds in flight, but that's not all the, all the time. Um, ISO capabilities would probably be the main thing. Um, you know, you can shoot stuff in low light even with pretty bad ISO capabilities. You can just bring it down, but you've kind of got to hope the animal doesn't move too much, which isn't ideal. Um, probably miss that the most. The autofocus tracking as well, going back to birds in flight, um, it's got fewer focus points. The D7500 has got, I believe, uh, in the 50s as opposed to into the 150s, which the D850 and the D500 both have. So, you know, I kind of miss that flexibility when trying to shoot um, action shots. So what about the ATD? It must be in a pretty similar story with that camera, am I right? Yeah, so the ATD is definitely the equivalent of the D7500 yeah. for Canon. Um, and it's, it's got a pretty solid AF system as well. It's got mm -hmm. 45 cross-type AF points. Cool. Um, I didn't find any massive issues tracking. I mean, um, the the 1DX uh, Mark II and the 5D Mark IV both have 61 points. Okay. And so they've both got um, much stronger focus systems, but between them, there, there isn't really that much. Um, the A2D, it, it's a solid little camera. And one of the features actually of the A2D that I know all of the Nikons you've been trying out today have is that tilting screen on the back. Mm. Um, oh yeah. And I've, I've missed, I really missed that in the 5D yeah. and the 1DX. So you've obviously experienced both the cropped sensor and the full frame sensor, as I have today. What, what were your thoughts on both of them? How do they compare and contrast? I think uh, I, I've always sworn by full frame sensors. Oh, I know. I can um, remember. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's all I, I've shot with for years. And yeah. I, have, I don't think I've actually really used a crop sensor probably for getting on for six, seven years now. Yeah, okay. Um, but when we were shooting flamingos today, mm. um, there was a big crowd of them. And I was finding on the full frame, I was using a 100 to 400 millimeter lens from Canon, and I was finding on the full frame that I just wanted to go that little bit closer, just to try and fill the frame with bodies yeah. and, and some of the flamingos' heads. 
and I found myself getting rid of the 5D and putting on the 80D. And that wasn't just because I was testing it. That was that was genuinely me thinking, you know, actually this is more appropriate for this job. I wouldn't say that's a massive benefit though, because with the full frame stuff, you can just do that. It's just essentially cropping into the center, which you could do at post. You know, it, it saves you a bit of time not to do that, but that is an option. Yeah, although obviously then you've got the consideration that if you're gonna find yourself cropping in all the time, mm. you may as well not spend the extra thousand, two thousand pound on a full frame sensor if you're it's just gonna get rid it's of those, those pixels. Oh, exactly. I think the message today really, and what we found and I think probably already thought, yeah. was that um, the professional but mid-ground cameras like the 5D Mark IV, and now the D850, although that is kind of in its own weird class. Yeah. But they are the clear favorites for us, and I think that unless you really, really want that 14 frames a second on the 1DX and you really want to be shooting in incredibly low light. For me, shooting with the 5D Mark IV might be a bit of a compromise in some situations where you find that you have to slow your shutter speed down a little bit because mm -hmm. you can't push the ISO up as high as the 1DX Mark II. But I don't think there's been more than a couple of occasions in my whole career as a wildlife photographer where I've really wanted that 14 frames a second. Mm. Because even at 7 frames a second, that's a lot of images. And what's the difference really going to be from a fraction of a bit of movement um, in that time period. So my, my favourite is definitely the 5D Mark IV. And for the same reasons, my favourite is the D850. Well, there you go. I think we've put through some cameras from some very clear brackets in the in the industry. We've gone through flamingos, we've, we've gone through cows. What else can we test? That's, that's a pretty comprehensive job. So that's what we think, guys. These are our favourite cameras mm -hmm. of the day. And it would be really good to see what you think in the comments below. So drop us a message. Let us know what cameras you're shooting with. Stuff you might be thinking of buying. Um, Sam and I will, will hop in the comments and, and give, our, give our advice, I think. Um, but that's bye from me. Bye from me. And don't forget to subscribe to the Nature TTL channel. We've got more tutorials, kit reviews and inspiration, behind the scenes features for you every week. So just hit that subscribe button below and we'll see you next week. Bye.